Inside the Magic Show number 411 for February 17th, 2013. Hello. If you are new to the area, the Monstropolis Chamber of Commerce would like to welcome you. While you're in town, be sure to... We interrupt this program for a special report. A child is on the loose in Monstropolis. A human child! If witnesses are to be believed, there has been a child security breach for the first time in monster history. We can neither confirm nor deny the presence of a human child here tonight. I tried to run from it, but it picked me up with its mind powers and shook me like a doll. It's true! I saw the whole thing! It is Sunday, February 17th, 2013. This is show 411 of Inside the Magic. And as always, I'm your host, Ricky Briganti. Got a, a really fun show this week, packed with all kinds of crazy, fun Disney stuff and plenty more. And if you ever, uh, actually, before we get to all of that, I do invite you to visit our website over at InsideTheMagic.net. There you'll find all of our podcasts, videos, photos, news, articles, and plenty more. And if you ever have any news, tips, questions, comments, or... Anything else you want to send in, you can always do so by emailing me at ricky at insidethemagic.net or you can call and leave a message at 407-494-4ITM. That's 4486. And now, let's get on with the show. This week's episode of Inside the Magic is brought to you by Magical Travel. Think spring. Save up to 30% at select Walt Disney World Resort hotels for stays most nights uh, from starting tomorrow, actually, February 18th through March 23rd, and then again April 2nd through June 14th at a minimum uh, four-day Magic Your Way tickets to make it a package and get a discount on the tickets, too. You can call Magical Travel today for all of that at 866-207-8387 or visit them online at MagicalTravel.com to receive a free price quote and be sure to mention Inside the Magic when you call over there to uh, receive a free Disney gift card for qualifying bookings when you book your Disney vacation with Magical Travel. And uh, thanks very much to uh, Pamela Wright this week for your donation, as well as uh, anybody who's made a a single donation, recurring donation, clicking through those affiliate links over on the website. It all supports the show and uh, allows me to do things like what I did this past weekend, which I'll be talking about later on the show. Uh, But first, let's get started with our trip around the world. So we do have some uh, exciting things to cover this week, but first we'll go through our our regular news, of which there wasn't a ton of regular news uh, this week. A little bit of fun here and there, starting out here at Walt Disney World in Orlando at the Magic Kingdom, where Valentine's Day was a few days ago. Happy happy late Valentine's Day to everybody out there and uh, all of that. Anyway, uh, Valentine's Day was celebrated at uh, the Magic Kingdom with a special ceremony. Uh, dozens of couples were invited by the Disney Parks blog that morning, February 14th, to show up at Cinderella Castle uh, pretty much first thing in the morning to renew their commitment to each other. In attendance at the uh, ceremony were Cinderella and Prince Charming, Aurora and Prince Philip, Mickey Mouse and Minnie Mouse, and uh, it was all organized by Disney Fairy Tale Weddings as part of the Limited Time Magic True Love Week, which wrapped up today. You can head on over to InsideTheMagic.net or check our YouTube channel to see what that ceremony was all about. And of course, with that wrapping up, that means a new week of limited time magic is beginning. And uh, this is going to take place out here at Walt Disney World as well as at Disneyland in California once again. Beginning tomorrow, February 18th, it's going to be the week of President's Day. Of course, tomorrow is President's Day, uh, but it's actually going to continue daily through February 24th. And uh, limited time magic is going to bring some extra entertainment courtesy of the Voices of of Liberty Acapella Singing Group. Out here in uh, Orlando, that means over at Epcot, the America Gardens Theater, they will be uh, doing a special performance there, uh, uh, as well as at Disneyland, uh, out in their uh, usual spot in the uh, the gallery area. This uh, special performance uh, from Voices of Liberty daily, uh, as I said, through February 24th, will include uh, not only a variety of patriotic songs, but also uh, memorable quotes from American presidents, tying it into President's Day. So there you go. That's the uh, limited time magic uh, for this week. 
but that is not the only thing going on over at Epcot. Uh, the Epcot International Flower and Garden Festival is on the way. It hasn't opened quite yet. However, part of it has already opened up a couple of weeks early, actually. And uh, that part is the Land of Oz Garden. This is something new for this year, obviously, in promotion of Oz the Great and Powerful, which opens in theaters on March 8th, just a couple of weeks from now. The uh, play area slash garden is uh, the Epcot Flower and Garden Festival's largest ever garden. It's got a downed hot air balloon, a yellow brick road, some circus-themed games, and it is uh, open for your enjoyment now uh, in Future World at Epcot, and it will continue to be there throughout the entire run of the Flower and Garden Festival, which officially starts on March 6th. There's two days before Oz the Great and Powerful hits theaters and continues through May 19th. Of course, the uh, Flower and Garden Festival at Epcot is included with park admission. However, this year they are adding uh, all that great food and drinks that I talked about a few weeks ago here. Uh, that does cost a bit extra. Of course, Disney's not going to be giving out uh, free food and drinks to everybody, but uh, that's certainly something I'm going to, I am looking forward to uh, enjoying in the near future. Speaking of Oz the Great and Powerful, uh, Disney, Disney has been doing something special uh, in promotion of the film. In addition to that garden, there's the Journey to Oz balloon tour. Of course, a hot air balloon is very important to the story of The Wizard of Oz and Oz the Great and Powerful. And there's an actual hot air balloon that has been branded with the Oz the Great and Powerful logo that uh, originated from Walt Disney Studios out in Burbank, California, and is making a few stops throughout the country in promotion of the film. Uh, two of those stops have already happened. One was at El Capitan. Theater in Hollywood. That was on February 13th. And then just today, the 17th, it was at the Disneyland Resort parked in the Esplanade between the two parks. It's going to move out here to uh, Florida on February 20th, a few days from now, at the Daytona International Speedway, and then go up the coast up to New York, where it's going to be in Central Park for two days, March 5th and 6th, just a couple of days before the movie opens in theaters. Coming back down here to Walt Disney World now, over to Disney's Hollywood Studios. The newest version of Disney Junior Live on Stage has made its debut. It now features the characters from Doc McStuffins and Sophia the First. And Sophia the First has been incredibly popular since its debut. Uh, also, uh, some stories from Mickey Mouse Clubhouse and Jake and the Neverland Pirates are returning as well. So you've really got four properties in this one show. Uh, as I said, that is open now at Disney's Hollywood Studios. And over at Disney California Adventure, the comparable attraction uh, will be opening on March 22nd. Back over to Epcot, I've uh, received word that apparently the uh, Segway tours around Epcot are no longer taking place in that park, at least for the moment. I'm not sure if it's a permanent cancellation or if they're just uh, retooling them at the moment. Uh, there was a bit of a reorganization of those tours a few months ago, and it could be that they're just trying to determine the best way to move that forward, or perhaps they're just not doing them there anymore. However, the Segway tours of Fort Wilderness are still going on, and in my opinion, having done both Epcot and Fort Wilderness, Fort Wilderness, uh, Wilderness this one is much more enjoyable if you're really there to ride the Segway. It really gives you a chance to have a more open, uh, full speed, well, not full speed experience because they do put a speed limiter on it, but uh, as, as fast as they'll let you go and uh, really gives you a chance to roam a bit freer, whereas Epcot's a lot of start and stop kind of thing. Moving outside of the world of Disney now, uh, a little bit of a surprise announcement this week came from SeaWorld Parks and Entertainment with a new live show called Madagascar Live Operation Vacation is coming to Busch Gardens Tampa and SeaWorld San Diego. It's a 20-minute musical show starring the stars of the Madagascar film series, Alex the Lion, Gloria the Hippo, King Julian, Mort and the Penguins, and it will have a live band performing rock and pop music as well as classic and original songs. Uh, the characters will do meet and greets with guests. Of course, there will be merchandise available. That's going to make its debut at Busch Gardens Tampa on May 28th, followed by SeaWorld San Diego on June 15th, with the possibility of the show expanding to more of the uh, SeaWorld parks and entertainment parks in the future. Uh, interesting footnote, of course, is the fact that Madagascar characters were formerly appearing at uh, Universal at some point, so now they've kind of jumped ship there and moved on over to SeaWorld. Madagascar, of course, is a, a DreamWorks picture, so it's not really directly connected to, uh, to any of those theme park franchises. 
Speaking of Universal, however, out in uh, Hollywood, the rumors of Despicable Me, Minion Mayhem, heading out there seem to be true. Uh, Terminator 2 3D closed at the end of 2012, and the rumor was strongly indicated that its replacement would be Despicable Me, which opened a few months prior out at uh, Universal Orlando out here. Well, uh, recently in talking about uh, uh, sort of the financials of uh, NBC Universal, Comcast, who are the owners of NBC Universal, some executives there just kind of casually mentioned they let loose that Despicable Me would indeed be coming to Universal Hollywood. It does seem like it's going to be a clone, more or less, of uh, the Minion Mayhem attraction uh, that is, uh, as I said, out here at uh, Universal Orlando at Universal Studios Florida. Let's turn to the Disney Cruise Line now, where uh, amidst uh, plenty of really bad cruise news that was going on for Carnival Cruise Line this week, Disney's got plenty of good news, and uh, it begins in 2014, where Disney Cruise Line has uh, announced some new itineraries. For the first time, Disney Cruise Line will be sailing from home ports in Venice, Italy, as well as San Juan, Puerto Rico. They'll also be offering an expanded collection of European cruises, including the Greek Isles. And as I said, there wasn't a whole lot of news this week, uh, and we are already at the final news story, though I do have plenty more for you to enjoy uh, over the rest of the show. Anyway, getting to this last story, it's that uh, poster has been released for Disney Pixar's next animated short called The Blue Umbrella. It has already made its premiere, the short, uh, at the Berlin International Film Festival, uh, but it will make its theatrical debut in theaters. Uh, of course, that's where a theatrical debut takes place. Anyway, uh, June 21st is when that is uh, is going to happen, but you can see the poster now, which those of you watching the video version, you're already looking at it. So, uh, the story of Blue Umbrella is amidst the rain in a singing city, two umbrellas, one blue, one, uh, one not, fall eternally in love. So yes, it's another short film love story, but Pixar's shorts are always so very fantastic. In fact, I'll be talking about one of them in just a minute or two here, but uh, that'll do it for your news from around the world this week. Last week on the show, I shared a tip from years ago. A caller had uh, called in a tip about parking at downtown Disney uh, instead of paying to park at the, uh, the theme parks. And you could park at downtown Disney, take the bus around Walt Disney World property, and that way you could, uh, you know, perhaps have an easier time parking. And I got a flurry of emails from many of you saying, no, that's a terrible idea. It doesn't work. Downtown Disney doesn't even service the parks anymore with the bus system because of this. They don't want people taking advantage of this system. And okay, okay, okay. Perhaps I wasn't quite as clear as I should have been when it came to last week's tips. So consider this week's tip a revision of last week. Yes, of course, you can go to downtown Disney to park your car at uh, well, just about any hour of the day, as long as there are stores or restaurants open or open there, which is uh, from early morning until very late at night. Yes, you can from there take some buses from downtown Disney to a variety of places around Walt Disney World, uh, hotels and other such locations. You cannot, however, uh, they stopped it a few years ago, take those buses directly from downtown Disney to the parks. But if you really intend on going to the parks and you're really intent on parking at downtown Disney to make that happen it's of course possible by taking a bus from downtown Disney to somewhere else that then services the park so that would be a two hop bus trip and probably not the speediest ways of getting there if time is of any value to you yeah pay paying to park at the the theme park uh, you know parking lot is much much closer it's a little expensive you know I think it's $14 now but it's probably worth it to uh, get that much closer but as I said last week, and this was kind of the footnote that I put on all of it that I thought was the most important point, you're probably going to end up at downtown Disney anyway. Beginning of the day for breakfast, middle of the day for lunch, end of the day for dinner, shopping somewhere in there. If you're working downtown Disney in your plans anyway, and perhaps even visiting another hotel, then suddenly it all makes sense. You can certainly park at downtown Disney, leave your car there, use Disney's transportation. It is uh, can be convenient at that point if maybe you're going to go to downtown Disney and shop and then go to a hotel and get some lunch and then head over to the parks for some attractions and then make your way kind of in the reverse direction all the way back to downtown Disney for the end of the night. Pick 
wake up your car and be on your way. Yeah, something like that could work. So uh, the tip, as stated last week, perhaps wasn't perfect. And uh, let me thank Caitlin and Lori and Karen and Andy and Brian and anybody else who uh, wrote in or called in or anything else in about the tip. I hope that has clarified it a bit. Everybody else out there, email your tips into tips at insidethemagic.net. Now, a minute ago, I talked about uh, that I was going to talk about a Pixar short, and I'll be doing that here in just a moment. But before I get to that, let me put in a quick word about capturing magic. It's a pair of iPhone apps that are the ultimate tool for documenting and recording the magic of your Disney vacation. Whether you're at Disneyland in California or at Walt Disney World out here in Florida, capturing magic will offer a helpful list of photo opportunities and memories to capture before, during, and after your trip. It is the perfect way to ensure that you don't miss any of those magic moments and while you're in the parks the app's going to remind you as you're walking around hey you're at one of those photo opportunities and then you can take a photo mark it off tell who's in the picture and uh, later find export and organize those photos and even email yourself a list of who was in the pictures capturing magic iphone apps are available now in the itunes app store <laughs> Here it comes. An Inside the Magic Blu-ray review. So you probably could have guessed that it was going to be a Monsters, Inc.-related Blu-ray review here based on what was at the top of the show, a little Monsters, Inc. fun there, and I promise you it's not the only Monsters, Inc. fun we're going to be having on this week's show. But first, before we get to round two of Monsters, this is going to be round one, and I'm talking specifically about Monsters, Inc., uh, just coming out on Blu-ray in 3D. That's the key. You might be thinking, oh, I already have Monsters, Inc. on Blu-ray, but this one is in 3D. So I'm not going to be reviewing the whole gamut of everything that is on this uh, release because a lot of it has been carried over from the previous Blu-ray release. Of course, the previous Blu-ray release of Monsters, Inc. looked fantastic. Crisp, clear, beautiful, wonderful, all of that. In 3D, really honestly, it looks even better. It was in theaters briefly, didn't do so well in theaters in 3D. I didn't even go see it uh, in theaters in 3D. Just thought, eh, you know, it's an older movie converted to 3D, you know, who cares? But popping it in uh, earlier today uh, at home in my uh, 3D player, it looked really, really nice. Uh, just for some examples, some real simple examples, uh, the title sequence, you know, the sort of 2D animated title sequence with really sort of uh, clever, sketchy artwork in there. Uh, that looked great. There was a lot of depth to the doors as they're opening and closing and things are coming out of it and that fun animated sequence that opens the whole film. Something as simple as uh, Mike Wazowski and James P. Sullivan sitting in their little apartment and just watching, you know, that little TV uh, advertisement that Mike is so excited that he was in there even though he was covered up by the little M logo. Just a little moment like that, the depth that uh, this version has added to, uh, it is really great. The 3D looks very, very nice. It's crisp, it's clear, of course, it's high definition. It looks nice, of course, where it really shines is when you've got action films such as the infamous door scene near the end of the film, and uh, you can imagine that that is it would be sort of a, one of those 3D demo moments, and I was really looking forward to seeing it, and I was like, okay, this has got to be a great moment in 3D, and it is. Uh, when, you know, Sully's riding on the door, he's got Boo in his arms, and they're flying through. They go through the tunnel, and of course, I'm sure all of you have seen the movie. This isn't any kind of a spoiler for any of you. If you haven't seen it, go see the movie. You need to see Monsters, Inc. But anyway, uh, he's going through the tunnel, and uh, you em they emerge into the door vault, and all of a sudden, you've got that wide shot of riding behind them of uh, coming into the whole area, and the 3D just gives it so much depth, makes it a really nice, immersive uh, look. Of course, uh, you know, 3D is 3D. You don't have to see it in 3D. To enjoy the film. Obviously, it's been around for many years prior to the big 3D craze that is going on, but it does look really, really good. So I will give it uh, some extra points for that. Of course, uh, there are a couple of new features that come with this 3D release. One of them, and here's the Pixar short that I've been uh, mentioning, Party Saurus Rex, the latest Toy Story short. And I actually had not seen Party Saurus Rex until now. It was uh, played in theaters, I believe, before Finding Nemo in 3D, which I did not see in theaters. Uh, so finally today, I got to see Party Saurus Rex. Fantastic short. 
Another in a, a great line of Toy Story shorts. Love the Toy Story characters, of course. And this one is great. And it is in 3D on the release, which is wonderful that they uh, they put it in that. Great, uh, you know, crank up your sound system for this short film because there's just thumping music. Of course, it's Party Saurus Rex. And uh, it is a lot of fun. Definitely great on there. Also, and here's a fun extra. They Really the only additional thing that they added for this 3D release. The original blooper reel. Uh, for Monsters, Inc. that played sort of in a tiny little square over the credits has now been included at full frame, full HD resolution, and in 3D. So you can see those bloopers like you've never seen them before, and they look great as well. They're still hilarious, and tacked on the end, of course, is also the uh, little musical uh, uh, bit. Uh, put that thing back where you came from, or so help me, and all of that. Uh, that is included as well, and I've now looped this uh, theme song three times, and it's time to wrap up this review. So uh, Monsters, Inc. Blu-ray, in 3D looks uh, looks wonderful. I can't really say anything bad about it. Uh, it's got a great little lenticular cover, too, where the door is open. It's kind of popping out of the package and all of that. And I don't know. It just looks great. So if you got a 3D player, you're a big fan of Monsters, Inc., then I would definitely recommend this, uh, this 3D version of the film. <laughs> But we are not done talking about uh, Mike Wazowski and James P. Sullivan and that whole world of Monstropolis. However, we're going to stop talking about Monsters, Inc. now and actually work our way over to uh, the other Monsters movie that will be coming out in a few months, Monsters University. Of course, I haven't seen the film. It's not, not done yet. It's still got a few months to go before it actually hits theaters. But what I did do was go to Toy Fair. Uh, this past weekend, a four-day industry-only event in New York City at the Javits Center. That's the convention center right there in the heart of New York City, Times Square, just a few blocks away. I had a blast. I have so much to say about Toy Fair that I can't possibly cram it all into this one episode. Uh, but what I do want to talk about is the special event that Disney held on Monday, February 11th, uh, this past Monday. As part of Toy Fair, it was uh, an event that included the premiere of a new Monsters University trailer, which was hilarious. Uh, you may have seen it online already. Um, it introduced a lot of uh, characters that uh, are going to be a, an integral part of uh, the Monsters University film. It Also, the event, uh, in addition to that, of course, was there for a product debut of all kinds of Monsters University toys, which I'll be talking about here in a minute, and also featured special guests. Uh, Josh Silverman, who's the executive vice president of global licensing for Disney Consumer Products, was there, uh, but names that you probably don't know him, but names you might be familiar with uh, include the director of Monsters University, Dan Scanlon, was there. The producer, Corey Ray, was there. And voice star, John Goodman, was there. Uh, really fun event, and I actually had a chance to sit down and chat with all of them for uh, just a little bit, uh, which I, I will uh, sh very happily share with you here. Uh, but not yet, because before we get to that, I actually want to share the whole presentation with you because it was incredibly entertaining. A lot of fun information, a lot of great sort of behind-the-scenes information about Monsters University without spoiling anything, of course. Of course, they don't want to ruin the movie, so don't worry. There's no spoilers here. Just a lot of fun surrounding Monsters University and uh, the products that are also being released for that. Um, the, now, uh, the guests, uh, there was press, and there were other special guests uh, in the audience for this uh, presentation. We were all kind of gathered in a, in a convention hall at Toy Fair uh, for freshman orientation at Monsters University as they were, uh, they were billing it. And like any good college ceremony... This one began with a marching band.
Please welcome your Monsters University Freshman Orientation Advisor, Jim Babcock. marching band and they are on loan to us they are the spirit of stony brook marching band under the direction of john lenny let's give them another big round of applause okay all right so this is i'm going to take you back a little ways we are in freshman orientation and i'm your freshman orientation advisor do you guys feel like you're in good hands <laughs> I'm going to need some more spirit from this crowd. You guys feel like you're in good hands. <laughs> no, it's early. It smells like teen spirit here, doesn't it? <laughs> All right. So, uh, welcome to Monsters University. Welcome to Freshman Orientation. You are in good hands by all means. I'm going to take you through this. As I look out at these sea of faces, I cannot help be reminded of the legends that have slid, stomped, and slimed through the grounds of Monsters University. And they all started right here in freshman orientation, and so today you're going to go through orientation at Monsters University. You are going to learn about the legacy, the legend, recent accomplishments, developments, and real life stories that make Monsters University as successful as it is. Everybody ready? Yeah. You guys want to know what we're going to do today? Yep. Yeah. You know how I'm going to find out? I got the old freshman orientation advisor, clipboard right here. Yeah. All right, so first of all, we are going to have real world filmmakers. We have Dan Scanlon, who is the director of Monsters University, Corey Ray, who is producer. They're going to be here to talk about the inspiration and legacy of Monsters University and talk about what's coming up in our first semester. We are also going to be talking to Executive Vice President of Global Licensing with Disney Consumer Products, that's Josh Silverman. I don't know if you guys know this, but Josh is also the Dean of Business Strategy here at Monsters University, so he's going to come in and talk about a very important research and development project going on and tell you all about the new line of toys for Monsters University. Through the magic of technology, folks, are you still with me? You hanging on every word? Picture? <laughs> That's a key yeah. <laughs> Through the magic of technology, we have our esteemed, our esteemed and prestigious Chancellor of Monsters University, who is going to be here today, to talk about his enthusiasm for the line of toys for Monsters University. And we've got a couple more surprises that we will keep until later. So you guys ready to get started? Yeah. Yes? Okay. We're going to get started, and I would like to first bring out, as I mentioned, the director and the producer of Monsters University. Please welcome... We have Dan Scanlon and Corey Ray. <laughs> Welcome to the student lounge, you guys. Thank you. Thank you. Mm. I heard a kegger last night. It was fantastic. <laughs> uh, so first of all, um, thank you for being here today. This is exciting for all of us to get to talk to you. And uh, there's obviously a humongous, great buzz about Monsters University, and uh, I think the question that I have, and probably a lot of people in the room have, what took so long? Uh, well, uh, at, at Pixar we don't make a sequel, or in this case a prequel, <clears throat> and, unless we have a great story. And, uh, and we, we really found one. We always loved the relationship of Mike and Sully in the first film, and <clears throat> we wanted to do something that explored that a little bit more. And so college felt like the perfect setting for that. Yeah, and so, so you know, college, great setting. We can all relate to, to college. We're in freshman orientation. But I'm wondering, what was it like creating college life in a monster's world? And did you guys draw from experiences of your own? Well, you know, we... Not that you're a monster. Right, exactly. <laughs> we, um, uh, most of us went to college, but most of us went to art college, which isn't 
really real college. <laughs> we we, we um, did a bunch of research. We went to colleges all over the country and really tried to soak up what read as university and, and uh, get that kind of vibe. And so we started designing the school um, based on this research. But like the first film, we always monsterize the world. And what that basically means is making things big enough to support the weight of an 800 pound monster and flying monsters. So we took those buildings and we bulked them up and made them big. And we also like to, um, in the monsterizing process, you can see in some of the photos, you know, adding horns here and there, adding those little details that make it feel monstery. Uh, sometimes even uh, faces in the buildings. And you know, some of those old college buildings already feel like they have faces in them, so you have to kind of really pull that out of the architecture. But again, you see some examples. Um, so it was just such a great experience to do that research and, and, and make that world feel more original to our world. So you didn't go to a real college. I want to hear about that. <laughs> Don't tell my parents. Um, I, I know a lot of people are wondering, you know, Monsters, Inc., great characters. Yeah. What characters are coming back to this film? What's, what's, what's the story on that? So, obviously, we'll be seeing Mike and Sully again, but we'll also be seeing, uh, from the first film, Randall Boggs, who was their kind of nemesis. He was the, their competitor. Right. And so we'll be seeing how they met 18-year-old Randall yep. as well. And, uh, and we'll also have a few great cameos from the first film. We'll see some people yeah. who are students and even some old characters who weren't students. <laughs> uh, but uh, just keep watching the background. That's right. Yeah. Always watching. Nice. And, so, and keep watching the backgrounds. Just keep watching. Okay. Um, and and I'm curious. You know, we 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 know we're excited about the film. We're here about the characters. But as far as the story goes, what without giving too much away, what can you tell us about the story? Uh, yeah. So it is the story of Mike and Sully um, meeting in college, and 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 sort of how that friendship began. Now when. Mike is one of the first people we meet, and one of the things we find out in this film that we didn't know from the first film is that Mike really wanted to be a scare when he was 18. Uh, here's Mike arriving at Monsters University, and that was world to him. With a retainer. Yeah. With a retainer. And, uh, and again, scares are the big terrifying monsters that scare the kids and bring energy into the world. Well, Mike is this kind of cute, adorable monster, but he's going to prove to the world that he can do it. And so it's a Mike that is still the funny crazy Mike we know, but he's also more um, focused on his goal of proving that he can do it. And at that point, we meet Sully. Now, Sully, again, is 18-year-old Sully, and he is a little different than what we know. He looks like a scare. He's a big, even at 18, he's a big, terrifying monster, so he's a little cockier than what we remember. He's, he's like a football star, and he comes from a family of great scares. So, He's got a little more swagger, and he feels like this is going to be easy. And so right off the bat, with these differing philosophies, Mike and Sully meet and kind of get head to head. They're very and, and they're, so they're not friends. And not they're friends they're at all. Very competitive. And as a result uh, of this competitive nature, they end up getting kicked out of the scaring program right off the bat. Right. And as a result, they uh, Mike comes up with a loophole. Uh, a way to get back into the program, but unfortunately, it involves working and teaming up with Sully, yeah. and even worse, it involves the idea of him and both of them having to team up with this team of rejected scares. So imagine the least scariest monsters in the world are on your team. And so to meet some of those characters right now, uh, this fraternity that they become a part of, this is Don Carlton. Uh, Dan, hold on just a Corey, can you keep it down? I can barely uh, Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> This is Don Carlton, and he is a mature student right. returning to college to uh, follow a dream of studying scary, but when that doesn't work out, uh, Don is just uh, basically trying to learn the computers at right. this point. And, uh, yeah, and uh, Don is voiced by Joel Murray. Yeah, yeah. It's really great. And uh, next we have uh, Terry and Terry. These are, um, it's Terry with a Y and Terry with an I. Um, there's so Terry with the I, the one I. Oh, you know, they <laughs> no, uh, but, uh, so, so uh, very kind of your classic bickering brothers, both wanted to be scares, didn't work out, so now Terry with an I is a dance major, and Terry with a Y is not. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't see a problem it, with that. It makes it a little difficult. Um, and Terry with an I, uh, the younger brother, is voiced by Jason Schwartz. Yeah. And Terry with a Y is voiced by Dave Foley. Yeah. Wait, one of them, they're connected, but one of them's younger. I wouldn't even go <laughs> <Yeah>. there. <laughs> but, I mean, that's, uh, you know, he looks younger. Yeah. yeah. 
<laughs> and, and next we have, uh, this is uh, Scott Squishy Squibbles. And he's kind of your 18-year-old college student who doesn't know what he wants to be. He's undeclared, uh, he's interested in scaring, but he doesn't quite know his future. We've always felt like he's, a, he's one of those kids that's a, a ball of clay kind of waiting to be molded. And in his case, he's almost literally a ball of clay. Uh, and he's voiced... He's voiced by, by Pete Sohn, who's uh, actually a co-director at Pixar. Yeah, he's an artist too, yep. with a great voice. And uh, and then lastly, we have art. Now, I don't really know what art is. <laughs> art, we, we, we kind of feel like art is that college guy that you don't know anything about. He's like the weird guy who hangs out in the room all day, and you don't know what his past is or if he has a family. And strangely enough, he's become one of the most popular characters yeah. as a result of like, who is this bizarre guy? It's fantastic. And he is voiced by? He is voiced by Charlie Day. From uh, Always Sunny, and so uh, so together they make up the Uzma Kappa fraternity. They're sort of a self-made fraternity. Their headquarters being Squishy's mom's basement. Uh, so that kind of gives you an idea of the story. I don't want to tell too much more, but uh, again, I can promise you, it's a fun movie. Uh, with the, uh, basically at the heart of it is how these guys met, how they became the great friends that they are today, and also being a college film is about self-discovery and how they. Uh, Kind of grew up to be who they are, um, but we can uh, show one thing. We have a, a, a big surprise. Um, you are going to be the very first audience to see our new trailer. Um, it hasn't been anywhere. Today is its debut to you, um, and so this is the first real trailer um, for Monsters University. And so again, I, I you know I, I'm so excited that we can show it to you guys first. But uh, I just ask one thing: I want other audiences to, to see it as a right. surprise too. So so please, uh, if you could not blog about it or, or take any photos, it'll just be our little secret. Okay, so Dan, this is where I have to step in. So uh, <laughs> freshman orientation advisor, uh, first of all, top secret information can't leave the room. If you've got a recording device, blogging device, tweeting device, give it to me. <laughs> put it in your chair. Put it in your bag. But the great thing is, we all, and we also have uh, members of our uh, Monsters University wrestling team over here. Uh, I'm his personal trainer. Uh, and she, oh, don't cross this one over here. So uh, let's keep it inside, but this is a wonderful opportunity for you guys to see this first time. So let's take a look at this brand new trailer. I'm going to give you guys an A plus on that. Oh, uh, uh, thank you. I want to give you a good grade. Um, but I want to thank you guys for being here today, sharing the, uh, the experience of the movie, love your enthusiasm. We are all looking forward to it. Now, for those of you academics out there taking note, June 21st is the day I'm looking forward to because that is opening day for the film. Right. And I wish you guys all the best. So how about another? Well, actually, before you go, yeah. I have a gift for you. Oh. And, and, and there's no charge on this. Uh, <laughs> Get up, guys. These are Monsters University felt pennants. That's right. Uh, show your spirit. Wave them high in the air. Come up, Jake. Yeah. I give a big number one. I'm going to give a, you know, I don't give the Monsters University foam finger to just anybody. Uh, but I'm going to give it to Corey and I'm going to give it to Dan. How are you guys doing out here? Okay, checking in. It's a rainy New York morning, but here at Freshman Orientation, we're having fun, right? Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Uh, let me put my finger down. All right, we are going to switch gears a little bit. We're going to move over to the College of Business. Now, as I mentioned before, we have had a group of people, research and development group, who are working to conceive a brand new Monsters University inspired line of toys. So we have the expert here to tell us all about it. Uh, he is the Executive Vice President of Global Licensing from Disney Consumer Products. He's also the Dean of Business Strategies. Uh, his business card is 14 feet long. Uh, but I would like you to welcome him as we bring him into the uh, student lounge. Please welcome Josh Silverman. Silverman, how are you? Uh, please, please, yeah, call me Josh. I will call you Josh. And Josh, my God, you look great in that jacket. Thank That's you. Nice. Thank you. you. look like you're about 12. Thank you. <laughs> so, uh, you, uh, there are some... <laughs> Every time he gets me. 
So you're going to share with us some advancements uh, uh, coming our way. Uh, tell us all about it. What are sure. your advancements? Well, that's right. We've been working real hard, and so we've been working with over 125 fantastic licensees and developed over a thousand amazing Monster University items. And today, I'm thrilled to share with you the results of Busy Consumer Products' close collaboration with Fisher Price and Spin Master in the toy category. So one of the cool things about freshman orientation, I think, is when uh, students and faculty can share their first-hand stories. It's inspirational to us. Mm -hmm. So uh, we have some questions for you today. And I would say, uh, uh, what, is in, what really is in store as we look ahead from now until the film opens? What's in store for us? Well, we've created a product collection that includes everything from action figures and vehicles to preschool and radio control toys. And we've had an all-new innovation segment that takes the toys to a new level. Fueling boys at need for action, adventure, and fun play. And in true Disney fashion, each product helps kids recreate key moments from the film, which is important. It is. I'm going to start asking you some hard-hitting questions, Josh. So, in the spirit of Monsters University uh, Discovery and Learning, I understand your team was challenged to use the latest technology. And, you know, I'm going to have to ask you this. Josh, did you succeed? Well, Jim, uh, we did. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Some of the most unique toys in the lab include Scare Off Silly, which utilizes lifelike animatronics and sound and light detection technology to interact with kids. Next, the Roller Scare Monsters have an innovative pop-up platform mechanism to accentuate the element of surprise. And finally, the Sully Monster Mask has a movable mouth and eyebrows that allow kids to recreate Sully's monster expressions. <laughs> and scare the heck out of your kids. That's what it's all about. So it sounds like you guys have thought of everything for every monster, every human to have. When can we find these? When can we buy them? Very good question. Thank you. Well, starting May 10th at retailers everywhere, including Walmart, Toys R Us, Target, Amazon, the Disney Store, and more. And we'll be adding more items in the fall of 2013. Now, how popular, the movie is going to be blockbuster, as we already saw. How popular do you think these toys are going to be, John? Popular. Monstrously popular, Jim. Stop uh, it. Uh, we have an exciting big summer release from Pixar with Monsters University. Their films have an amazing pedigree, and there's such great storytelling that we can tap into and create really great products that kids are going to love. And it doesn't hurt that every Pixar film has opened number one at the box office. And we expect no less from Monsters University. All right. A tremendous result from a collaborative effort. Uh, Josh, I'm going to give you an A plus two. Thank you. I, I, I would never fail you. Um, and so uh, thank you for uh, appearing here at Freshman Orientation. I, too, have, I know, a felt pennant for you to wave high into the sky as you dance around New York. Thank you for being here tonight. Thank you. Chancellor of Monster oh, University God. and our biggest toy. Fan. Hi, I'm John Lasseter, Chief Creative Officer of Pixar Animation Studios, and welcome to Toy Fair, everyone. I really wish I was there with you. I love Toy Fair, as you know that. And so I'm here to give you an exclusive first look at all the Monsters University toys. Okay, first up, from Spin Master, is the Sully Monster Mask. It's 100% kid powered. How do you, how, what do you mean, John? Well, the kid puts it on his face and he goes, Hey, I'm James B. Sullivan. See, it's really cool. They truly become the real Sully. Next up, we have the Imaginex University Row playset by Fisher Price. This is awesome. Now, there's a scene in Monsters University where Mike Wazowski is chasing Archie, the scare pig, through the whole University Row. And you get to reenact that. So, here, one, two, three. I got Archie in. Isn't that great? And this is one of my favorites. This is My Scare Pal Sully by Spin Master. Now, he's got three modes, and you get him started by shaking him. Star player has just arrived. Now watch this. Okay, this is 
the scare mode. Ready? And that's why I'm the big monster on campus. Isn't that awesome? He, this character totally comes to life. And the great animated face is one of my favorites of all the toys. This is the Toxic Race playset. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. So, you, you do a race, and you flip these up, and these guys will roll down, and the winner pops up in the finish circle. All right, see, only one guy gets to pop up. This is a Toxic Race playset. Hours of fun with this one for me, for John Lasser at least. What do you think? It was cool, huh? Hope you enjoyed being the very first to see the Disney Pixar Monsters University toy collection. It's pretty exciting. All these toys. I love the toy part of my job. And so, um, you know, just in a few minutes, you're going to get a chance to see all of these toys and play with them in person. I hope you have a great rest of the toy fair and pick up some free samples for me, okay? Bye! Yes, you heard us right. That is the toxic waste playset. Every kid will love that. It's like being at the Javits. <laughs> yep, where else can you get nachos? Yeah. Yeah. All right, so uh, as John mentioned, you guys are going to get a chance to see the toys. And I know after you've seen some of those, you're going to want to pick them up and play with them. And you're going to get to do that in just a second. But right now, um, I would like to uh, switch gears for a little bit. You know when you're trying to learn something and it's always helped to have someone around who's got first-hand experience, you know, the person who's kind of been there, done that, you know. In college, that is, that's important. So uh, we have someone here uh, today that um, does, definitely has first-hand experience to share. Uh, he is the voice of Sully in Monsters, Inc. and Monsters University. I am thrilled to be able to welcome to our student lounge, John Goodman. Monsters University. You're, you're, you, you, you're intimate with monsters. I'm curious. <laughs> I'm speaking of the girl face. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, what was it like to step back into the role of Sully after 11 years? Well, I'll tell you, it was just like getting one of Lasseter's Hawaiian shirts as a gift. <laughs> Finding it fits. It was, it, yeah, it was just... Uh, like finding them, uh, you know, one of your favorite old jackets and losing a bunch of weight and be able to get into it again. It, it, it was great. Um, they took us up to the campus at Pixar um, for one of the first recording sessions, and everybody up there is so cool. They're way cooler than I am. I didn't fit in, which is just like college. <laughs> um, and, and, uh, and then the, uh, where we record at Disney, uh, it's such a familiar place. They've got a great recording engineer named Doc, and he makes you feel at home. And it's, uh, it, it, yeah, it was great to be back. And then we're working with Billy again. When, uh, every once in a while, we get to work together, and uh, the energy in the room really takes off like a Saturn rocket. And it's, it's so much fun. And it, it's, uh, it's like a family. That's very nice. And I know Billy wanted to be here today and could not. So. Yeah. Um, so, Sully is obviously younger in this film, and I'm curious, as you're lending the animated voice, did you do anything with your voice to make him sound young? What I did was, I usually go to a fat guy's store to get my underwear. <laughs> <laughs> but no. I, I, went, I went to a regular clothing store, and that helped. <laughs> <laughs> and and the, the, rhythms, the rhythms of the piece, the, um, the way it was written, and um, doing it like a take 475 times, you just find your way. <laughs> your voice naturally goes up. It was, it's just the way things were, and it, and it evolved uh, naturally. So, the movie All About College Life, were there any similarities from Sully in college to you in college? The fact that I didn't fit in. Uh, no, Sully uh, actually does fit in. He goes in with a real cocky attitude. He knows he's got the world beat. Um, it was totally opposite from my experience in college, but we both 
discovered fraternities at an early age, um, and it helped. Um, but uh, it was it, the, the, the details that, that they've written into the script and that they've uh, animated into the script. Are, are, uh, everybody who's gone to college uh, and knows a little bit about college life is going to feel right at home here. It's terrific. And you are no stranger to doing animated voices. So you did Emperor's New Groove, mm -hmm. you did Jungle Book 2, obviously Monsters, Inc. I'm curious, when you're, when you're doing a voice for an animated character, how does that differ than you being on screen and being fabulous like an Argo? I know this is going to sound like I'm whining, but it's so hard. <laughs> <laughs> it is, it, it, you just think you'd show up and talk into a microphone, but because the camera doesn't see you suggest the character or anything like that, you, you, you have to throw everything in your body into what your voice is doing. And after um, quite a few times, it's, it's exhausting. I mean, I, I, it, it's, I walk out of the studio sometimes feeling like I, I've just been to the gym 12 times. It's, it's exhausting, it really gets to it. And it's very rewarding too to see it. So all you got is your voice. So yeah. Everything has to be project, project. Yeah. Okay. So I'm curious, in terms of recording the voice and the dialogue, were you able to ad lib anything? And if so, did it did it make it to the final reel? Uh, I, if I did, I don't remember. But Billy is the king of the ad libber. Billy's a great writer, and Billy's like ten times funnier than I am. So. Whenever Billy would come up with something, I'd, I'd just try to hang on for dear life and, and go with him. And uh, you can see the guys in the in back behind the glass who are recording things. <laughs> but I, I don't know how much made it in. But uh, well, that's a good sign if yeah, you see him laughing. Yeah. So uh, you you've seen a lot of the movie. We obviously have not seen a lot of the movie. Is there a favorite scene that you can share with us? I think it's the first time that Sully and Mike meet. Um, Sully comes into Mike's room through a window looking for a pig. Of course. Why he's looking for a pig is, is a part of college life. Why not? <laughs> and it's, uh, they, they kind of meet cute, um, but uh, it, yeah, it's part of the pig chase. But um, they, they don't really, they're so competitive and so cocky in their own ways that uh, Sully just thinks things are going to happen naturally for him. He's a given. He's very entitled. And, and Mike is a grinder. He really wants to work. He wants to be the best. And that, their competitiveness, it, it, it butt heads, and um, it, it's, it's kind of funny. All right. Um, and you a lot funnier than the way I explained it. <laughs> um, I'm so glad you're here with us today. Um, I, I, Thanks. I, I know you could be doing a lot outside. It's such a beautiful day. <laughs> Picnic in Central Park, yeah. a carriage ride, something like that. Anyway, I, I would like to say thank you to John for being here today. Please give him a beer. So uh, we have a licensee who we think a lot of, Spin Master, and they have created a one-of-a-kind, bigger version of what they call the Roll of Scare Monsters from Monsters University line. So, uh, and it's, yeah, I know. So, what I'm going to have you do, John, yeah. is uh, uh, you, uh, I'll go ahead and hold it, and you push that red button. And the red button? Did everybody see that? Let's get some photos of John. Here we go. Good. All right. John Goodman, everybody. You guys, you made it through freshman orientation. I know, before 11 o'clock. So, um, uh, thank you for being here today, and, and you made it through freshman orientation at Monsters University. We are gonna have you guys now try a skill at opening a whole new door, and that is the door to the world of toys. A lot of what you saw today and what you've heard about is right at the back of the room. We're gonna have you go back there and check it all out firsthand. There are hosts back there with pennants, they're going to show you how to get there, but I want to thank you for being great students. I give all of you A+. Plus. 
and uh, have fun at Toy Fair. Thanks for being here. A very entertaining presentation by uh, Disney, uh, Disney Consumer Products, uh, of course, uh, Pixar, and everybody involved with Monsters University, uh, but there's there's definitely more. Immediately after that ceremony, I, uh, as I said earlier, I sat down with Dan Scanlon, with Corey Ray, and with John Goodman to uh, talk a little bit more about what they had just uh, discussed up on stage. Now, I didn't have a lot of time to speak with them, uh, just a couple of minutes, but I do want to share that with you. And, and and let me say, uh, Goodman, uh, who sat right next to me, uh, is is certainly a big guy. Uh, he's uh, but he's an extremely nice guy. A big smile on his face the the whole time. Very funny guy. Uh, and of course, he's got a great voice. It was it was so uh, surreal uh, to be sitting next to the real Sully. Uh, and, and in fact, that's exactly what we were talking about uh, to begin this. Uh, we began by discussing what it was like for him to step back into that role as James P. Sullivan after so many years heading back to Pixar and uh, and sort of picking up where they left off. But now, you know, a bit younger. Uh, this is the college days of, uh, of Mike and Sully and the whole Monsters gang. And so uh, let's hop back on over to, uh, to Toy Fair and hear uh, what uh, John Goodman had to say about that and then uh, a little bit more about Monsters University as well. It was it, it was just it's so comfortable over there. They make you feel so like you're part of a family um, at, at Pixar, and um, it's just it's great to, to go back to, to, to go to work there. It's uh, it's a great familiar feeling, and and you know you know everybody, and it's like family, and, and it's just a it's a very nurturing, very supportive. And then they break you. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't start crying until at least the fourth week of this. Yeah, yeah. exactly. <laughs> 103. Yeah. Question. No, it's, it's great. Right, question for all three of you, actually. Uh, the scariest part of being in college and then the scariest part of returning to the Monsters franchise. Oh, uh, the scariest part about being in college... You know, I think a big part of it, and, and sort of a part of our movie, is showing up and realizing you're not as good at what you thought you were as good at. You know what I mean? Every, right. uh, every kid, every whatever that shows up to a university with, like, uh, in, in our case, art school, yeah. Uh, yeah. was realizing, I'm the best drawer in my hometown. <laughs> and then getting to school and realizing, I'm terrible. <laughs> and so I think it's a big part of the movie, but I think it's, college can be humbling. It's humbling, yeah, indeed. Oh, very much so, yeah. yeah. And returning to monsters, uh, to the monsters world is the first movie is a great movie. So there's a lot of uh, the, the bar is very high. The bar is high, but this was such a great idea. Yeah. Um, and, and it's not really a sequel. It's, it's just a great because I remember when we did the first one, they said, "Well, we're not going to have a sequel because there's no really good reason." Mm -hmm. You know. Right, right. And this is perfect. It's the way it turned out. So how do you avoid that? prequel syndrome that's kind of a scary word after star wars uh you know i mean it's it's we we oh! <laughs> we uh it is a challenge but again it works so well for the story we wanted to tell yeah. but uh and they yeah they cut that jar jar Binks character <laughs> <laughs> We're hoping this one works because uh, we really did want to kind of set up just how Mike and Sully met because you just don't, you don't know that in the yeah. first movie and there's such amazing characters and such great friends and so it's totally cool to set up go go backwards and, and find out how they yeah. met and, and a little bit more about who they are. Yeah, how they butt horns. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> And then, of course, the subject came up about a specific line from the first film where it was mentioned that Mike and Sully met in fourth grade, apparently contradicting Monsters University. So here's what, uh, here's what they had to say about that. There was a line yeah. in there. <laughs> it will be deleted from the new... No, uh, no you know, we, we really we thought a lot about that line, but in the end, we want to tell the right story, the best story, uh, and that is the most important thing. And in order to tell this the right way, you know, we do have to take some creative liberties, but the spirit of it is still the same. They've known each other forever. They've known each other. I think that's just a monster saying. I've known you since yeah, the fourth yeah, grade. It's like slang. <laughs> uh, I've been doing that since I was in the fourth grade. Yeah. yeah. 
And what about making the familiar monsters from the original appear as themselves in Monsters University, but younger? Well, uh, John Goodman, when asked about that, got a kick out of uh, director Dan Scanlon's answer. The, the trick of it was, there was a lot of work that went yeah, into making them look younger. surprisingly hard. And, uh, and the trick of it is to make them look younger, but at first glance, familiar. Yeah, that's Mike and Sully. But I think you'll be amazed when you put them next to each other from the first film, they are vastly different. Really and they different. do look much older in the other film and, and sort of yeah. grayed because we made them very <laughs> colorful. Um, but I think that the art department did a great job of capturing the feeling of them, but them feeling younger. Yeah. They lose their color. <laughs> 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 So sad. <laughs> they are, yeah, they are more vibrant. <laughs> a lot of laughs to be had during uh, that brief interview. Of course, John Goodman doing his best Chewbacca and Jar Jar Binks impersonation was a, a unique moment for sure. But we were, after all, at Toy Fair, and it wasn't only time to chat about Monsters University, which I lo- would have loved to have done for you know half an hour, an hour, as long as they would have given me. Unfortunately, I only had like two minutes. Uh, but we, So we were there to talk toys, right? It was Toy Fair, after all. We were there to talk about the products that they were debuting there, and the person to talk about that was uh, the guy that you heard on stage just a little while ago, Josh Silverman. Again, he was the Executive Vice President of Global Licensing for Disney Consumer Products. It's a very long title that basically means he's in charge of the toys. And, uh, you know, the, the question, of course, that began that conversation was uh, just how do you take, or how does Disney take a movie like Monsters, Inc., or in this case, Monsters University, and translate that to the world of toys. So here's what Josh Silverman had to say about what you want to try to do, of course, um, is is sort of take advantage of the content and the storytelling the spirit of, of what the movie's about. So we work with great co- collaboration and very closely with you know the filmmakers to make sure that the story that they are going to put onto the screen, we're able to then bring to life and physical to the goods, right, to the toy side. So. Um, you know, every movie has its has its, uh, its differences, its challenges. This one was a lot of fun because, obviously, as you can see from the, the trailer, it's so exciting, it's so so great, and it connects with kids and adults of all ages. You know, it's a, it's a, it's a Pixar film, it's a Disney Pixar film, and, and it's great, great storytelling. So, you know, this one was um, this one was a good one. This was a fun one, good fun fun project. The toys you shut off on stage are definitely very exciting. I've been to the website for Monsters University and uh, like your jacket and a lot of other sweaters and apparel. Uh, are we going to see a lot of more uh, apparel coming out as well? I know a lot of people are excited about those. Absolutely. Yeah, you know, given that this is Toy Fair, we have uh, toys, right? right? But uh, And when we get behind the curtain, you'll see a lot more of them. Right. Um, the toys we show is just a small sampling of the great products we have. Great collaboration, again, with, with our with our licensing uh, uh, partners. Um, and then we, have, we do have a, a really sort of uh, cross-category comprehensive licensing program. We have about 125 licensees. We have a thousand individual items, everything from fashion and home to food, health and beauty, uh, uh, you know, decor, the whole bit. We really we really run the gamut. Um, and I think we've, uh, we, we have a really robust program. We're really happy with it. And I think uh, it's going to be really exciting. It's so further fun. toys like action figures, that kind of thing will be? we got figures and we have a lot of role play stuff and, uh, uh, you know, it, it, across all categories and subcategories for sure. Action, adventure, bit. Yeah, it's really good stuff. And, uh, and there we go. It's just a little bit of the highlight of the toys that will be coming out for Monsters University. Of course, I wanted to get even closer. In fact, up close and hands-on with the new products. And he mentioned behind the curtain. So after the interviews were over, I literally went around the corner behind a curtain. And there was essentially Monsters University campus set up there, which was a lot of fun. A lot of sort of uh, displays that were uh, set up to look like, uh, you know, a, a main hall and, uh, you know, a bulletin board with a variety of flyers for the Monsters College and things like that. Just it felt like a campus life. And amidst all of that was the uh, were the toys, uh, many of the products that will be coming out. A lot of them were prototypes. So I couldn't really, you know, do too much of them. Not all of them were working, but they'll be coming out in a few months as we get closer to the movie. And uh, on hand, there were reps from two of the toy, the major toy companies that were working with Disney for that Monsters University license. The companies are Spin Master. Uh, you may not know the company Spin Master, not as common of a toy name. However, they have made many, many Disney toys in the past, including uh, uh, most recently, uh, well, maybe not most recently, but they did do the uh, the whole Tron legacy line of figures and uh, and vehicles, and they've done many, many other Disney uh, toys as well. Also, there was a rep from Fisher Price, and I talked to uh, both of them about their products. So let's start with, uh, with Spin Master, who's do- is doing the majority of the toys for Monsters, Inc., and let's learn a bit more about uh, what 
the toys are for uh, this upcoming Pixar film. We are at a Toy Fair in New York 2013, just wrapped up the Monsters University event and now uh, here to demonstrate a few of the products that are coming up from Monsters University. Can you introduce yourself? Hi, I'm Jen Tan. Uh, I work at Spin Master. I'm a designer there, so I worked on a lot of the items in the line. And I'll take you guys through this really big line. They've got some really compelling toys and really fun toys. Excellent. Let's off. go right to it. Yeah. Um, so we'll start off with the smaller items. These are kind of the two-inch collectible figures. they got limited articulation, and we work with Pixar very closely to stylize them to get a really appealing look for them. So they come in two packs, and they also come in one uh, single packs. And you've got many different characters, you can collect them all. Um, this is our squealing mascot Archie. So uh, you basically squeeze him, and then you throw him, uh, just like a football. So he's our pigskin. Uh, he's the one that Sully's chasing after in the movie. Okay, so he'll be a recognizable character for once we see the movie. Super cute, yeah, yeah. <laughs> he's their, uh, he's like the uh, mascot. So That's going to be a must-have item right there. Um, so these are our scare majors. They're seven-inch scale action figures. Um, okay. They have really cool um, mechanical features. So here's Art. He's a really, he's a one of my favorite characters. So when you squeeze his legs, rawr, he gives you a big scare. So all of them have their own unique scares. Actually. I have a feeling you've been playing with these a lot. Oh yes, I play with them all the time. <laughs> we gotta make sure that they work perfect. So you can actually try them in package. So here's Sully's or And then Mike, we wanted to make sure that, you know, we captured his humor. And that's his, his scare. <laughs> so that's Mike. A picture of Billy Crystal sticking his tongue out and there you go. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Here we have our five-inch scale basic action figures. They're called the Scare Students. So they're very, um, they've got different articulation points for doing a bunch of characters. Their arms can articulate, their legs, and even the eyeball. Ooh, 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 ooh. <laughs> and then Sully too has a, a lot of articulation points, so you can really pose him just however you want to. And I see Squishy back there is yes. both poseable and squishable. He is squishable, yes. You can't really try him in the package, but he's right. very squishy. <laughs> Hence the name. Yes. <laughs> okay, so here is one of my favorite segments it's called the Roller Scare Line, Roller Scare Monsters. And uh, basically, it's from Spin Master. Uh, I don't know if you guys are familiar with the Bakigan or Zoobles, but comes on a little ball and comes with a collectible ID card, Monster Duty ID card. And once you place him on the ID card, he pops open and, sp and uh, scares you. So he pops open to life. So we have a bunch of different characters. We worked with Pixar again to really achieve a appealing and unique style that really captures the essence of each character. And we're doing about 12 characters in the first year. Um, and in the segment, we're also going to be doing, I'm going to set this up, a toxic uh, scare playset. A roller scare playset where you can basically race. It's one of the key scenes in the movie. You can basically race your uh, friends and see who wins. Ah, sometimes they pop open and sometimes they don't. That's kind of the part of the fun. Let's see if it, it pops open again this time. Ready? Let's go. Ooh. Oh! Oh no. No winner that time. Oh, <laughs> and such is the nature of playing with toys. Yeah, I think it is. But basically, there's two different places that you can pop open. I'll help them out here. You can pop open here in the finish line. Or you can pop open here where there's sea urchins, okay, and that's when perfect. you lose. Now, these have a, a very distinct look to them. Uh, it seems like maybe they're a little bit of inspiration for the vinyl collectible world. Yeah, sure, definitely. Um, we really looked into, yeah, the collectible stylized, really cute, um, appealing looks for all the characters. And also, because of the transformation, we thought it really was a great fit for um, the monsters, the world of scaring. So, right. you know. This is the little surprise is really you know fitting with the, the MU line. So uh, we worked really um, hard with the Pixar filmmakers and got them to approve each one of them. They wanted to make sure that each one car captured the, the character. As e even if they don't look exactly like they do in the yeah. film, they still get the yeah. same sort of spirit behind them. Yeah, yeah, exactly. What is the, uh, the age uh, sort of a you're aiming for for this type of a product? Um, probably around three to five. Three to six, yeah. Anybody so, yeah. who would be amused by a little rolling ball. Yeah, yeah, anybody. <laughs> right. All ages, yeah. I have a feeling my cat would even enjoy it. Awesome. <laughs> All right, let's keep moving on down the line here. Right. Oh. Whoops. Uh-oh. Running into another product demo. <laughs> All right, let's go here. Okay. Yeah. So this is my pal Sully. He's at $39.99. Um, he's a really interactive feature plush, and he's got three modes of play. And he also has two levers in his tummy. 
where you control his facial movement and it really brings him to life. And when you press both of them, that's when he lets out the big roar. So um, you can shake him to basically change between different, three different modes. There's scare mode, tickle mode, where he's laughing. And then also, uh, sleepy mode, where he's tired. But even his little eyebrows move. Yeah, his eyebrows and his mouth. Yeah. It's interesting to see a, a sort of a plush looking character that has so much animation with yes. the not only the sound but also the facial expressions. Yeah, I don't yeah, it's and it's a lot because there's like two different lip movers so you can get that really nice growl. Yeah. So that's my scare pal Sully. Excellent. So, um, yeah, I think they're probably filming all okay. So um, this guy is Scare Off Sully, so he's our big, super ant interactive uh, feature plush, and he's really interactive because he teaches your child how to scare. He comes with five different modes. Um, he comes with scare training mode, where he teaches your kid, you know, scaring levels from small, medium to big scares, a variety of different scares, and he has a volume sensor that detects um, how loud and how intense your scares are, and he'll give you proper feedback. Um, then if you are ready, he'll challenge you to a scare off, so that's scare off mode, and then you'll see if you can really scare Sully. So he's going to be, you know, pretty tough on you, but if you're really scary, he might even fall off his feet, and he'll be like, that was awesome. So that's kind of the, the goal for each kid to really scare Sully. Um, and then he has a speed scare mode where he, teach, he tests the speed of your scares, so that's really important in a scare. And also a scarometer mode where he basically measures the level of your scare uh, real time with his hands and kind of his uh, gestures. And then the last mode is room guard mode where he'll protect you from any uninvited, you know, brothers or sisters and he'll give them big loud scares. So that's scare off Sully. So um, one of the cool things about being here at Toy Fair, you get to see toys in early in development. This one's just an early prototype, doesn't actually function, but he'll have all kinds of movements and you know lots of loud noises. Yeah, he's going to be super animated and uh, super scary. <laughs> okay, great. Speaking of scary, the next one is definitely uh, <laughs> right there. This is our Sully Monster Mask. Uh, we worked with an inventor from the film industry to really capture um, a lot of movement. He was a puppeteer, so we worked with him to really design a mask where a kid could really become Sully. So um, it's all 100% kid powered by your jaw when you put it on, and I'm gonna put it on for you guys. Okay. All right. <laughs> all right I only do it for a few people here. So. Right. Okay. Ah! <laughs> So you can see that my mouth activates the eyebrows and Oh wow, okay. You really become Sully when you put that on. Yes, you do. And, and you need a reasonably small head to be able to fit yeah, into that. It's, it's designed for kids. It does have a adjustable chin strap, so depending on how small or big the kid's head. I have a ginormous head. I'm not even going to try. <laughs> That's Sully Monster Mask. Okay. And that's now, now, would you warn parents to be, uh, you know, away from uh, monsters that might be lurking around the corner once their kids get a hold of this? Yes, beware, beware. <laughs> it gives a lot of power. Right. <laughs> There's a monster in every kid. And now continuing down the line of products, let's move on to Fisher Price to talk about their play sets for Monsters University. So my name's Sam Susai. I work for Fisher Price on uh, the marketing team. Um, working with Imaginext and uh, we've got a great line of show from Monsters University and Monsters Inc. Excellent, let's take a look at the playset. Yeah, so this is our Monsters uh, University Row playset and uh, with Imaginext it's all about activation play and really telling that story. So uh, in the movie you'll see that there's this great scene where uh, Mike is chasing Archie, the university scare pig, and uh, what you'll have here is you're going to have you can put Mike with Imaginex. They're all their feet are shaped in a certain way that they all work to uh, on the activation disc. So when you when you spin, you'll hear some sound effects, and you, uh, they'll be chasing each other. Mike and Archie on the roundabout. Archie will make his way up to the catapult here, and uh, if you put Mike up on top of here, push down. There you go, and he's <laughs> flying, and then. Uh, well, there's a trap door here, so he's going to go into his cage, and uh, that's basically the fun of the playset, and then you can do it all over again. And then, of course, you've got all these other uh, figures from yeah, the film as well. Figure assortment, so you'll see uh, the sororities, you're going to have Sully, uh, the fraternities, a uh, great lineup of figures. This looks like it's for a little bit of a younger age range. Yeah, so, imagine it's typically your preschool, uh, it's kid cool, mum approved, so typically uh, three to eight years old is the age range. 
So, but yeah, three is a great age for them to start playing with these. Okay. So now, figures, yeah. th this other playset looks much more familiar for those who have seen the original Monsters Inc. Absolutely right. So this is the Scare Floor. So it, while it does feature in Monsters U, it is essentially based off uh, Monsters Inc. Okay. And uh, you'll find that uh, when um, Mike and Sully first go to Monsters Inc, they weren't scarers, or Mike. Uh, Sully wasn't a scare to begin with. They had to start in the mail room here, so the mail room and storage with the canisters, and they moved their way up into um, maintenance and cleaners. So you're going to have your dustpan and your doors and, and, and whatnot. And then finally, they moved up into like maintenance and door repair. So you're going to have these great little features where you can detach a door, reattach it like so, and with the activation discs. You'll, you'll really get that feel oh, wow, of all okay. the doors moving, just like out of the movie. And uh, finally, like, uh, as for me, uh, the scare canisters fill up when you get the scare power going. Some great, real, really great activation and storytelling. And uh, beyond those products, of course, all those sound really, really fun, uh, particularly the uh, the mask. And uh, I'm really looking forward to seeing the uh, sort of scare version, the animatronic almost version of Sully. It wasn't it was just a prototype at the show, so I couldn't see how it was working. But I'm looking forward to seeing that. But beyond all of that, there were other products on display as well in this whole showcase, including plenty of apparel. If you haven't been over to the Monsters University website, you can already uh, buy apparel. They're really inventive clothing, like a four armed sweater and a four armed T-shirt and uh, clothing it looks as if you went to monsters university which is really fun of course uh, there's also a variety of shoes that are going to be available seems like it's only going to be kids shoes but shoes nonetheless uh some plush items and uh and more so uh you can head on over to inside the magic.net to take a closer look at all of this i've got videos and uh, more video uh, i'm sorry photos and more video as well and as you heard earlier uh, there are literally thousands of products that they uh, they have come up with for monsters university so there's uh, much more much more to come. It seems like this movie is going to be really fun. I've got a link to the trailer over on the website as well if you want to watch the new trailer for the film, uh, which is uh, hilarious, definitely in the spirit of uh, what Monsters, Inc. was all about. Um, so that's it for Monsters University at Toy Fair, but definitely not all from uh, from Toy Fair. Next week, I'm going to be taking a closer look at many other Disney products that were shown off throughout the uh, the big, big show. I mean, we, we were there for four days scouring the the halls, uh, uh, you know, going to all the major toy uh, makers and just had a great time. It is an industry only show, which meant uh, there were no kids running around. It wasn't a place where you should you were able to buy things. It was just for browsing and, of course, for for companies to, uh, you know, to do their deals uh, with with big stores and things like that. But, uh, you know, for me, just covering the event, I had uh, I had a great time uh, seeing all the products that will be coming out over the next year or so and definitely check inside the magic dot net this week for a whole lot more pictures and video from the event from both Disney and non-Disney products. I'm going to kind of do a wrap-up from both perspectives, uh, some of the best items of, of the show. It was my first time at Toy Fair, really had a great time, and it's always great to extend Inside the Magic's reach to new shows. Of course, a couple of years ago, went to San Diego Comic-Con for the first time, definitely going back again to that this year, returning to the D23 Expo again this summer, and considering even adding uh, E3, the big video game uh, convention, to the lineup. Of course, Disney has plenty of video games, with Disney Infinity on its way. I'm, I'm real tempted to, to do that. I don't know if I'll make it this year, maybe next year. I don't know. We'll see. But, uh, you know, it's always good to continue uh, growing the fun. And, uh, you know, this is what really the, um, uh, as I mentioned at the top of the show, just to put, sort of put a footnote on this, what the donations really help with, uh, of course, traveling to New York, not a cheap uh, trip. Of course, it was a sightseeing trip. It was a tourist kind of trip as well. So it was, you know, a lot of personal stuff. I don't, of course, mind paying to, you know, stay in a hotel and, uh, and do all the airfare and all of that. But every little bit helps so uh you know i love being able to do all of that and then turn around and bring all of this fun to you i mean otherwise you know when was the last time i interviewed john goodman on the show that was pretty cool uh definitely one of those highlights of uh, inside the magic history there so uh pretty awesome hopefully you've enjoyed it and as i said we'll be carrying uh, a bit more toy fair fun into next week's show as well but uh that'll do it for for now Also, we're going to wrap up show 411 of Inside the Magic. I definitely have plenty of listener feedback to share, but not this week because we're already running long. And, uh, you know, it's just uh, one of those weeks where I had plenty to talk about from that exciting 
Toy Fair show. Uh, I suspect that the same may happen again next week. Of course, next Sunday is also the Academy Awards, uh, and uh, I think I'll be recording prior to that show. I won't be able to talk about the winners quite yet, but I am working on uh, going through all the Best Picture nominees and seeing those. Uh, of course, uh, the only Disney connection amongst the Best Picture nominees is Lincoln, which they uh, distributed through DreamWorks, so not exactly a Disney film there, but there's plenty to be excited about in the animation category. Uh, Frank and Weenie and Wreck-It Ralph are both nominated, and hopefully one of those will take home the big prize. We shall see. Until then, I uh, do want to thank Magical Travel for sponsoring this week's episode of Inside the Magic. You can find out more about their services by visiting MagicalTravel.com. Don't forget to go check out those Capturing Magic iPhone apps. If uh, you want to organize your pictures when you're at Disneyland or Walt Disney World, these apps are the way to do it. Just search iTunes, uh, the iTunes store for Capturing Magic. And, uh, of course, visit us over at LanyardLab.com to see all the different styles and custom lanyard options that we have available there. You can request a price quote today to see, receive a free digital preview of your custom lanyard design, completely free to preview, no obligation to purchase whatsoever. So check it out, uh, L-A-N-Y-A-R-D-L-A-B.com. And, of course, between uh, episodes of this show, visit InsideTheMagic.net. It is your source for Disney and theme park news. Uh, beyond the show, you'll also find plenty of videos and photos and news and articles and find us on Twitter and Facebook and YouTube and uh, keep up with all the latest Disney and theme park fun uh, throughout every week. So I uh, look forward to talking a bit more about uh, some upcoming fun toys. Got some more interviews to share next week on the show. So uh, come back for that and plenty more. And thanks to all of you for listening each and every week. Have a magical week. Bye. There's a great big beautiful tomorrow Just a dream